Hello, everyone. This is uh, Tian Wei, host and moderator from CGTN China Global TV. It's such a pleasure to do this uh, keynote interview for APEC CEO Summit with uh, Tony Fernandez, who is an uh, entrepreneur and CEO of uh, Air Asia Group. Tony, how are you today? Very good, Tianwen. Thanks for, uh, for being and inviting me onto this uh, panel. Thank you so much, Tony. You know, I would imagine your work and life would be extremely busy because the airline industry is one of those sectors mostly impacted by the pandemic. So at this critical time, how are you looking at not only the business, but also the sustainable development part, which you have always been caring about? Um, well, I think uh, it has been an incredibly tough time uh, for us. We're now coming out of it. We have been able to, to use a big asset of ours, which is airline data, to go and pivot into new sectors. Um, in terms of sustainability, it's, it's given us time to, to relook at uh, this whole sustainability issue. Now, in most cases, people look at sustainability as just climate change, but we've also looked at it from um, many angles. Number one, surviving. Uh, you have to be a sustainable business. Um, but from the climate side, we have been working very hard on um, carbon offsets in terms of lightening our planes uh, so it doesn't weigh so much, working with air traffic control so that we burn less fuel and working with our engine suppliers and of course our aircraft manufacturers to reduce emissions. But I want to add that sustainability is not just about climate change. As an airline, we have to be responsible uh, when we bring millions of tourists into a beach, for instance. We have to make sure that that environment is not destroyed. We have to look at sustainability from the form of human trafficking, etc. So there are many areas for us to focus on. Mm. So it's not just about taking care of the environment, but also tackling with the uh, social and other risks that's related to it. Correct. And then, you know, in the airline business, sustainability is also being about surviving. Um, COVID is, has really hit us badly. And uh, I have to sustain all the jobs all the jobs that are uh, connected to us as well. Um, and then there's smaller sustainability. You know, tourism and industrialization has destroyed many villages. And so mm. we're very focused on making sure that no, not everyone leaves their villages and um, goes into the cities. So we work very hard with smaller towns to provide sustainable tourism. So there is employment and there is economic development in the villages in Southeast Asia as well. I would love to go through some of these points you just mentioned one by one. First of all, about climate change, uh, you, you said, of course, it's not just about climate change, but it's a big component of it. G20 summit and also COP26 have been dealing with that. Tell me more about how airline industry as a whole, do you see, is working on the emission issue and for economic airlines like yours, uh, particularly, how do you see that issue? Yeah, I mean, I think if I can just defend the airline industry for one second, you know, we get oh, an enorm en enormous amounts of press um, and negativity, but actually our emissions are, are far, far less than, say, the car industry or the power industry. But we all have to play a part. So um, from, from our side, I think one of the most important things we can do certainly in Asia, and certainly with the people flying with us, is education. So we spend a lot of time to say the climate issue is real, that we all have to play a part. We have brought in a voluntary offset charge um, so that people can contribute to, to cover their offset costs. In terms of uh, AirAsia, obviously, as a, as a low fare airline, we obviously are much more efficient per square foot because we carry more passengers than say uh, mm. an airline that has more business class and first class. So we burn a lot less uh, carbon emissions. Um, mm. But I think uh, governments also have to play a part. A, a lot of fuel is wasted in air traffic control, in um, airport planning. So it needs to be the whole aviation ecosystem which uh, takes part in trying to reduce emissions. It isn't just the airline. Mm. It's very interesting you talk about the ecosystem because now when you listen to the political leaders, including possibly at the uh, APEC summit, 
uh, they are talking about, let's have the more private businesses coming in. They are going to play a bigger role to solve the problem. Um, of course, that's true because they didn't incorporate it and they didn't act inclusively earlier. But uh, it seems that there's a ball being uh, kicked from the business community to the government, from the government to the business community. Tell me more about that, Tony. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very much a private industry man. And uh, I, I think it's, it's not one person, it's, it's all of us have to play a part. We have to educate the public. And I think in Asia Pacific, the public needs to be educated much more about carbon emissions, about plastic, about lots of things. And, uh, but I think private industry can't do it by itself. It needs to work with government. And I think government can't do it by itself as well. So there are three components really uh, there's private industry, there's government, and then there's the people. The people themselves can make a big, big difference if they change their attitude. You know, turning off your lights one hour earlier, cutting down air condition use, all of this can have a much bigger impact than flying. So I think it's not just one constituent. All of us have to play a part, private industry, government, and the public. Let's talk about the aviation industry, particularly about uh, the technologies. You know, there's a lot of talk about how technologies and innovation would be able to help the industry to cut the emission. Uh, to what extent do you think that is true? And for airlines like yours, how would that work? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we don't make planes so, or engines. So we're relying <laughs> on Airbus, Boeing, and GE, and all those dudes. Um, but Are they doing I mean, enough? Are they doing enough, Tony, from your perspective? Well, I think the engine guys have done a great job. I mean, from when I first started 20 years ago to now, we burn substantially less fuel. We have better noise emissions. But if you think about the av aviation industry, our plane design hasn't changed for almost you know, 80 years. Um, and we have been using the same combustible fuel technology for a long time. Uh, we're now beginning to see electric drones um, but I'm not sure that I'll be CEO when we have an electric plane. But, you know, I think now, I, I don't think the, air, air, the manufacturers moved quick enough um, in the initial stages. But I think now they're working very hard. I think the next step is an electric plane. Um, we're seeing smaller planes. We're seeing drones. You know, when we will see an electric Airbus 320, I'm not sure it's anytime soon. But um, there's talk on hydrogen planes. But I think for the moment, uh, the airline industry is kind of stuck with the technology we've got. And we just have to um, maximize what we have within the ecosystem to reduce emissions. I, I don't see massive technological change in the next 10 years. I see. One of the things you said is about how political leaders, they need to correlate with one another, even at a time when you have geopolitics and uh, also disagreements among countries, but still have to work on standards, work on uh, a process, a procedure that everybody could uh, uh, make use of so that business could function. This is a crucial point. It's, it's so crucial. I mean, you know, I'm so glad you give me the platform to say it. If you think about, you know, when I was a kid, which is unfortunately a long, long time ago, we used to walk around with um, yellow WHO booklets which showed that we had malaria jabs or tetanus or polio, mm. et cetera. It was a worldwide standard. Yet in this day and age, we do not have a worldwide standard mm. for dealing with, um, with COVID. And uh, we need to think as a global community. We are, you're right, there is geopolitics, there is differences, but we are an open global society and we need to have some mm. common standards. And, COVID is a great issue where the world should be working closer together. But there are, as you've said, hundreds of issues that are happening around the world that have affects the common man uh, because of geopolitics and less standards. And I hope APEC can kind of get its act together and, uh, and, and help businesses and ultimately the common man. Since we are working on this uh, interview, keynote interview, on the issue of sustainable business leader, I really wonder, concise, precisely, would you share some of the key points with your counterparts from the Asia Pacific region? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we all, we all have to play a part in sustainability. Um, I think climate gets a huge amount of attention, um, which we all play our part. I want to add, just to say that um, sustainability, education of people in Asia Pacific would make a big difference. So companies can make a big difference mm. by educating the public. And just my final thoughts is sustainability is not just about the climate. It's about sustainability of business, sustainability of environment on the ground, um, and you know, sustainability of towns. But there's lots of issues as the UN has put forward. So while climate is obviously a key one, there are many, many sustainable issues. And as I said on COVID, if governments don't get their act together, tourism is finished. You know, you know who's going to mm. fly anywhere if you have to do six PCR tests? So there's a lot to discuss on sustainability apart from environment.